Master of the Galaxy is a new, or I should say, upcoming 4X game. You know, the 4Xs, Explore, Exfoliate, Extrapolate, Exonerate, I don't know, I could never, I could never remember them. But luckily enough, actually, they're here on the box. There they are, in a fairly large font, much bigger, much larger than you would expect on more um, box leads. And speaking about the components and the graphics, this is a pre-production copy, how do I have it, you wonder? It's a sci-fi game. I to the future I grabbed one easy uh, so pre-production copy so uh, some of the things that you see here may not end up being in the final in the final product as published and released which is what I hope because as I will say more in detail in my conclusions there's a good game very good gameplay the production as is may benefit from a couple of tweaks a couple of little fixes here and there that may make gameplay more intuitive and may make the components work better which makes me realize I just anticipated most of my conclusions. It's a very good game, production as is, could be improved, but maybe it will be improved. So I don't know why I would want to watch the rest of my video, but in case you inexplicably decide to do so, what we're going to do is to take a closer look at Master of the Galaxy and then uh, we'll come back here for my conclusions, in which I will repeat what I just said in a more articulate form and with a little more details here and there. Master of the Galaxy, let's take a closer look. Here's the board of the game, it represents the sector of the galaxy where the players are fighting for supremacy. In the corners you see the areas where the players will place their starting base, bases are represented by wooden discs, and that's where you have your home system and where you will start to expand. Systems have a number of planets that goes from 1 to 3, where you can place cubes in order to uh, settle that planet and get more cubes we'll talk about that later also you see connections made of lines of squares these connections uh, need to be filled with squares for you to be able to go from one planet to another to perform actions from a place where you have a base to one in which you do not have a base and players will place cubes on the board to create these connections. Now the planets are various colors, so there is, uh, the, the systems are various colors, there is yellow, blue, green, red, etc, etc, etc. When you create a connection of this type, it has to be all made of cubes of the color of the system that you're moving from or of the destination system. You cannot mix colors in the same connection. Also you see connections here represented by arrows, but those connections are not movement connections, they are used for uh, scoring purposes. During the game you will try to take control of these symbols and you need to show that you have a certain number under your control to win the game. If you have five symbols of the same type, like five doves or five of this explosion type of symbol, you win the game. That is one of the ways of winning the game. If, you, if there is a red connection and you control one and only one of the systems uh, that are linked by the red connection, then you get that symbol. So if I have a system here, uh, a base here and not a base here, then ta-da, it's like this counts as my symbol. You do not have tokens that represent symbols, you just have to show them on the board and on face-up cards in front of you. This symbol here, you gain control of it if you control both systems that are linked by that that are linked by that connection. So this is the general uh, look of the board. The players will place cubes and perform various actions. In fact, using cubes to perform actions is really the key of the game. Each player has a bag such as this one, a bag of fate or whatever you want to call it. And at the beginning of the game you place 25 cubes in it. Five cubes for each of the following colors, red, blue, green, yellow, and black. The four colors, but black, are sort of like regular colors that allow you to perform a lot of standard actions. The black cubes are used to perform special actions or to cancel other projects. And as you may imagine, when you see that these cubes are coded by color only, they don't have any symbol printed on them, they don't have anything embossed on them, the game is virtually unplayable uh, by colorblind the players, simply because there are a lot of things that are coded only by colors, which is kind of unfortunate, it really is unfortunate actually, because there's always a way uh, to code things both for color and for shape. Now. 
So what do you do during the game? Uh, when it is your turn, the basic standard thing that you do is that you draw three cubes and you put them somewhere. You don't have to. Three cubes and you will put them on the board to create connections, for example. Uh, right now I could not do that. You can uh, use the cubes to cancel projects, but most importantly, again, you will place cubes on face-up cards. You start with one such face-up card, which is your species card. And basically, as you can see, each species has different tracks or different colors. And once you fill a track with the cubes, you get the corresponding benefit. For example, suppose that that is my species. Then I drew cubes. And this turn I drew, for example, a red and two greens, a red and two greens, and I decide that I want to put my red here and my greens here. I do that and nothing happens for the time being. You get the corresponding action only when you fill the whole track. By the way, you may already see that the cubes are slightly larger than the boxes on the cards in which they're supposed to go, which is not a problem now, but when there will be multiple cubes here, sometimes it's hard to tell if there is still a box under a long line of cubes that needs to be filled. Or suppose I could have done this, and again, nothing would have happened for the time being because I haven't completed any project. Or I could have done this. Aha, uh -huh. when I complete the small track, I get that benefit, which is I get to construct a base. I take a disk from my personal supply and I put it there in my constructed base. Bases that I constructed can be placed on the board, um, can be placed on the board on systems where I have, where I have a connection where I can place them. For example, I just place that, that base that I just constructed there. The base can also stay there for a while. You do not have to deploy it immediately, but the cubes of a completed project will go back in your bag. And that's an important element. You'll have several cards in the game and between the cards that you have or you're building stuff gradually between the board, the part of your cubes will be out there on the board, which is a way for you to manipulate the content of the bag. If there's a certain color that I really want and I keep getting cubes of other, of other colors, then I'm going to try to keep them out of my bag to increase the chances of getting the cubes that I actually want and need. When you go to a new system and when you place a new base there, you draw a leader card. This is one of the several decks of cards from which you will gain well, new cards, I guess. Leaders have tracks that you fill like before, like I explained before, you place cubes there until you get that advantage. If you fill the entire track, the advantage is to steal a cube of the corresponding color. So yellow, blue, um, green or red from an opponent. Also, leaders have abilities that you can use if you control the symbol or symbols indicated there. So if I do add that symbol, then, and see this other symbol means discard, I can discard any conflict card on the board. We'll talk about the conflict cards later, and so on and so forth. I need those symbols to use that ability, which sometimes requires to discard the card. Otherwise, most of what the leaders do is to steal cards from, is to steal cards from the opponent when you fill their tracks. You can have multiple bases in a place. When you place a second base in a place, this time you draw a conflict card. I will talk about conflict cards later. Although the idea is still that you're filling up um, slots on a card. I know what, let's talk about it now, actually. To start a conflict, you place a conflict card on the board. And as you can see, they have two tracks and you place it so that it connects, uh, that it connects different systems. You can attack a neutral system, you can attack a system controlled by an opponent, and quote-unquote combat doesn't feel much like, like a war of a fight, because again, it works by filling up slots. During the, when the card is there, players can use their cubes to place them on the card, trying to fill up their side of the conflict before the opponent does, and one once a side has filled up their, when I, once a player has filled up their side entirely, 
Ta-da! That side wins the conflict. Like right now, this side. So this player that is on this side of the conflict would be has won the conflict against that player. So conflict, as you can imagine, may stay on the board for several turns. When that is the case, the players get their cubes back. Oh, by the way, some it's usually cubes go back in the owning player's bag unless there is that symbol that represents an irretrievable loss. That means that you do not get the cube back. It is discarded. When you complete a conflict, the card is removed and the player that completed the conflict back get the corresponding advantage. Get one of the two advantages here on the board, depending on which side they are. They get the advantage on the opposite side, which sometimes can maybe to destroy base of the opponent, place your own bases, draw cards, etc. 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 This what happens if you start a conflict, and as we said, you gain a conflict card if you add a second base to a stack. You can have up to three bases in a system. But by the way, what I showed you here is a bad example because the number of basic and heavy in the system is only equal to the number of planets in the system, so I could not have added a second base there. But again, if you have three bases in a system then you again get a different you get a card and this time you get a government card government cards can be particularly powerful they have an effect that is in play <clears throat> whenever the text says that the effect is in play i'll show you a bunch if you want to read the text then simply uh, pause the video and take your time the general idea is still that when you fill tracks, you get the corresponding benefit, and then you also have another track which may give you cards, which may allow you to construct bases. Plus, again, they have an effect there at the bottom. They can be very, very powerful. This symbol here <clears throat> means that, well, whenever you complete a track that has that symbol as its reward, you can get a development card. As you can see, there's a small symbol here that matches that. There are three types, the commerce, the expansion, and the progress. As you can see from the color, yellow, green, and blue, that means that each deck emphasizes a certain type of cube. If you have a lot of blue, this is gonna be more effective. If you have a lot of green, this is gonna be more effective, but sometimes you also want to diversify. Same idea as usual, you have tracks that you need to fill up with your cubes. However, here sometimes the effect when the track is filled is simply that the card activates some symbols. And also there may be effect described. There, however, you need to fill the track in order to be able to benefit from those effects. Here, for example, during phase one of your turn, if you drew no blue resources, you may add a blue resource from the reserve into your bag. And also, again, when this track is full of filled with cubes you gain those two symbols which again is one of the ways of putting together a set, a set of five identical symbols so that you can you can win the game because again five identical symbols win you the game again i'll show you a bunch just to give you a sense so you see the art feel free to read the description i like this card very much feel free to read the descriptions by pausing the video So you start in your humble initial system there, and then you <clears throat> you create connections of this type. You go around, you go around starting bases in new locations, and that will give you leaders. You pile up, you create new connections, you pile up new bases to also get conflict cards and government cards. You do other actions of this type to get. <clears throat> good combinations of commerce, expansions, and progress. <clears throat> Again, ultimately, you're trying to gain new cubes. Oh yeah, there's an action I didn't mention, which is uh, how to gain new cubes. You place a cube on a planet in a system that you control, and if you place a cube which is the same as the color of the planet, then you get three cubes of the same color into your bag from the from the general supply however that cube stays there so it's only a net gain of two if you place a cube of a different color from the planets on which you're placing a cube then you get two cubes of that kind from the supply into your bag with a simple net gain of only one so you're performing all these actions you're manipulating the content of your bag both by adding new cubes <clears throat> and and keeping some out of the bag 
uh, you start projects uh, sometimes you change your mind and you cancel a project and this is what the black cubes are used for uh, to cancel partial project for example I want the cube there and I drew uh, black this turn so I canceled that project but again as you saw some leaders and some of the cards also use black cubes as their as their currency as their resource you perform all of these actions manipulate the content of your bag start projects complete projects to get more cards to get more options but ultimately you're doing all of these things to fulfill one of several possible victory conditions one is as i said before to be in control to control five identical symbol between the board and the cards that you have another way to win is to deploy all of your bases you have nine if they, if they are on the board good for you because you just won the game you can also win the game by taking control of other players own systems and this is how master of the galaxy works Master of the Galaxy is this bingo for Forex players, the way, say, Orlean by TMG was bingo for Eurogamers. That, that would be an unfair characterization for Orleans as it would be for Master of the Galaxy. Yes, there is this element, the stuff is drawn randomly from a bag, but of course part of the fun, part of the strategy that you do not have in bingo and other silly, completely random games such as that one comes from manipulating the composition of the bag. And here I think that there is a lot of fun that you can have, and they definitely had precisely in manipulating the components of the bag, in increasing my odds, so getting a certain thing rather than another, and through gameplay changing what I wanted to get next. So really definitely uh, there is a the level of depth there, um, which mitigates, I don't know mitigates the right word, which makes the random element interesting, makes something that you're struggling against, you are aligning yourself with. Yes, you know that there is randomness, but there are things that you can do as you're trying to uh, convince Lady Luck to, to go your way. From uh, uh, going in certain directions, like creating paths on the map in certain directions, committing certain projects that you don't necessarily uh, want to complete, and then what do you know? All of a sudden you get the cube against a lot, the cube that is needed to complete the project, and it will turn out that actually the, the reward that you get from that may end up being would end up being useful. So I definitely like the fact that you are dancing, dancing with Lady Luck from beginning to end, but it is a dance that has that has a form, has a structure. There is a system in, in this madness, and it's a system that is fun to, to enjoy, to discover, and to be able to, to interact with. I definitely like uh, the random element here because it's a random element which is, which is plastic, it's something that you can work with. Reducing it or increasing it, uh, exploiting it to your advantage, embracing it and various other possibilities. While at the same time as you're interacting with this constantly changing shifting element, interacting with the constantly changing and shifting uh, element of the other players that are doing their own thing, they're manipulating their own bag, which is good. Go and do your thing. The problem is that then also those darn annoying uh, competitors are occupying areas on the board. And the board is more smartly designed than I, than I thought at first. Uh, because of the maximum number of bases that you can play, that you can place in the systems and the way, again, the maximum limit is organized on the board, you are forced to move into somebody else's territory you are forced to get in their way there will be some of the x that stands for exfoliate no stands for exterminate you will have some some combat there etc etc or will you and here we get into another thing that i really like 4x games very often feel like oh the 4x's the exterminate is huge and then you have the little expand, you have the little ladder axis. Here the four axes are really all there and they're all equally worth it. Uh, this is a forex game with at least four paths to victory, one per X, but definitely with a lot of paths to victory, which is something that impressed me and again I did not expect at the beginning. Uh, there are games in which you do win by expanding a lot and by putting down all of your bases, but then I've also seen games in which a perfect combo came from simply manipulating the cards that you got 
I'm getting all of your icons from a great synergy of the cards. Basically, there are times where a player could win simply by putting three bases on their home planet and maybe ascending to one other planet and then manipulating rewards and resources so that you get the icons that synergize each other, that work together with one another and in Bazinga, you have five icons of the same type. In a certain sense, almost reminded me of what happens to Settlers of Catan, or Catan like people call it these days, when you add cities and knights, in which it is entirely possible to win the game uh, without ever building a second settlement, simply improving on the settlement that you have. Here is the same thing, and again, to me, this is very interesting, it's remarkable that you have a 4x game in which you at least potentially may win without getting into into a fight with other people. So when I said you will if you spend uh, have to fight with other people, yes, but expanding is an option, it's not something that necessarily you have to do. Even with a higher number of players you can concentrate mainly on what you have in your area, try to get the right cards and then the exterminate, exterminate combat factor will be minimal. This also means that the game plays very differently uh, with different numbers of players, which also means that the game is very flexible in terms of the kind of people you can play it with. Believe it or not, this can be a perfect, a great play with your spouse. And I know that I'm not the only uh, gamer, regular gamer, that has a spouse who does not enjoy competitive games, does not enjoy competitive in the sense, I should say confrontational games. Competitive, yes, I win, or better, she wins, I lose, she wins, I lose, she wins, I lose, she enjoys that. But if we have to fight in the game before she wins, then she doesn't enjoy it all that much. So there are many... Um, many many couples in which the spouse and the joy confrontational games this is great because if you're playing it's a two-player game it really is almost a multiplayer solo or at least I should say it can be because you do not necessarily have to start the fight even in that case however there are still things that you can do to annoy the opponent certain game effects that will steal cubes on the opponent etc etc what I'm trying to say is that it can be confrontational in several ways. It can be confrontational because my effects are affecting your cubes. It can be confrontational because I'm attacking your planet. Or it can be non-confrontational in which I am mainly developing my net of planets. You are developing yours. So with two players, it's entirely possible to have games in which there will not be a single conflict. So here you have a game that I think you can get a lot of views out of because you can play it as a two-player game, as a play with your spouse. If you if you if your spouse also loves confrontational games, that's great. Go on and start a crusade, a holy war against each other. You can do that. But you can play with non-confrontational players, with players that enjoy the civilization, the set collection, the optimization. You can play with those players. Or you can play it with, again, traditional 4X gamers, which are all about the technology and the destruction and the annihilation, etc, etc, etc. I have this knowing feeling that the game could also work as a solitaire game. Uh, you would need to create an AI that right now the game doesn't come with. Maybe that will be one of the stretch goals for the campaign. I'm throwing it out there. I think it could be possible to design a fairly simple AI, a fairly simple system of a flow chart, or in any case, a simple, uh, again, heuristic or algorithm that tells you where the AI places cubes, and you draw stuff, and you add cubes there, etc, etc, etc. I think it could be possible to have that AI just feels that way. I have no evidence, so it's just, just a mere hunch, and I hope that one day somebody develops it. As is, I am really impressed by this game because gameplay is is really, really good and is very flexible. Well, actually, come to think of it, I was, you know, rushing towards my incredibly positive conclusion, but I kind of promised I will also talk about the production, which I'm also pointing out sort of like... A, as, as a maybe footnote for for the publisher, hoping that some of these things will be uh, addressed before the game reaches the final stage. Uh, the cards are not, as, as things are, uh, the cards are not uh, in perfectly readable, meaning there are sequences of, of cubes that you have to place, and once you place all the cubes, they stay there and the effect is there for as long as you have the cubes. Other cards that you put all the cubes and you remove them. Other cards you do not need to put the cubes there. 
there is an effect at the bottom, this is unrelated to the cubes and the cubes point to something else. The iconography of what the cubes do is not entirely readable. Actually, I would say, is not easily accessible. Once you become familiar with it, you realize, okay, this card is used once, this card stays in play, etc, etc. The iconography could be a little clearer. For example, if there are effects that are always in play once you play the card, you could just add a little infinity symbol, you know, like the eight that is taking a nap, the infinity symbol there, that kind of thing. You could have clearer symbols here and there. There is actually another bigger problem when it comes to production, which is that the game is completely unplayable uh, by anybody who has any, any challenge when it comes to color recognition because it's about cubes of different colors and they're not marked in any other way. How do you solve it? No idea. Uh, you could maybe emboss them, of course, but if you emboss the cubes with different shapes, you know, one is a diamond, one is embossed with, um, with triangles, then it is at least theoretically possible that somebody could tell the difference. Probably not, but it could happen. Um, Use tokens, at least, you know, at least give the possibility, uh, one of the stretch goals, replace the cube. So with tokens that uh, have all the same shape as you touch them, but then have different images, not just different colors, so that there is an entire group of players that can enjoy the game. If you have any challenge when it comes to color recognition, you just cannot play, it's simply impossible to play the game because it's so much about cubes that are not marked in any other ways but color. Another small detail when it comes to the cards, the squares so where you place the cubes a little too small, make the cards a little bigger and the cards will be more pleasant to look at but also definitely um, easier to use. Sometimes have a line of three red cubes and two green cubes and I feel something is missing in there but I have to move them because the cubes are bigger and so they're covering the whole track including a, bo including a box that is still uh, to be filled. If the box were as big as the cubes or a little larger then I would immediately be able to tell even in long tracks how many cubes I'm still missing and what kind of cubes I'm missing which I can do because I can tell colors apart easily. Not everybody can do so, so I hope that at some point in the production that element is addressed. Back to gameplay, which I think is great. So, so back to my enthusiasm for gameplay and hoping that all my concerns about productions will come to naught, will simply be relevant by the time the game comes out, the game uh, will be as strong when it comes to functionality and production as it is in gameplay. As is, is a very strong game in gameplay, I enjoyed it a lot, I enjoyed the variety of gameplay, I enjoyed the, the tactical choices that I had to make turn after turn, I enjoyed the strategic element, of planning ahead. I enjoy the flexibility of being able to change strategy and just simply this very fluid, very organic sense that I had thanks to the fact that there was a composition in the bag that was slowly and gradually changing from one way to another, uh, from being strong in one sense rather than another, specializing in one thing or being more eclectic, etc, etc, etc. Very fluid, very organic gameplay, nice interesting interactions and what I like again is the flexibility to the interactions which can be as um, as confrontational or as peaceful a multiplayer solo as you want them to be. Master of the Galaxy, a very good game, gameplay wise. I hope that the components will be such when the game is released that will uh, that will be just as good as good as gameplay is.